Not sure what else. Whoa. Uh, I guess we're inside our baler. That's a little scary. There we go. <laughs> okay, if you ever wanted to know what the inside of a, a round baler looks like, well, now you know. Welcome back, everybody, to Farming Simulator 22. I'm an old guy gaming, and it is March 1st, as you can see. Uh, so we slept through January. We slept through February. Uh, I did look feb feb February. Yeah, we slept through February. <laughs> we slept through February. My goodness. Grammar, please. Uh, actually, that's more pronunciation. But anyway, uh, <laughs> so in February, I checked the contracts and some of them were popping up, but they wouldn't stay on the screen. They'd like just flash and then go away. And I think it was because we had snow on the ground. So, yeah, we did have a little bit of snow in February. Um, so it is now March, and if we look at contracts, they now seem to to stay here. And uh, we got this fertilizer contract here, which I'm probably going to do, and I'm not going to do anything with those contracts quite yet because my hay is ready to cut, and I would like to cut my hay. However, we're going to make a couple of changes with our equipment. Uh, one of you guys told me in the comments not too long ago that I didn't need to buy a separate baler for... Uh, for hay because this thing will bale hay and, and it won't wrap it if we ted the hay first, which we always have to do anyway. So in other words, it just it isn't going to wrap it if, it if it detects that it's hay. So I didn't need to buy this. So we're going to sell this. But I think we're also going to sell this guy. I want to buy the larger pottinger, the one that does the, the larger bales. Um, so we're going to sell those two things. I also think I want to return or not return, but sell this uh windrower and get a little bit larger windrower because i just you know this one's just really small and it kind of sucks to be honest with you uh so that is what is on the docket for today now uh, supposedly if we go to the shop if we take the the equipment to the shop that we want to sell uh we get a better price for it so if we go to our stuff that we own and let's just look at our baler here. So, so this baler, if we sold it right now, we'd get fifty-two seven ninety-seven. Okay. So now let's grab the baler and take it down to the shop and um, see if we get more than fifty-two ninety-seven. Lady, you are gonna have to leave. Out of the way, please. Out of the way. Out of the way. Out of the way. Uh, no, just walk right into me. <laughs> Pete's sake. Okay. So let's uh let's drop our front loader off here for the moment. And um let's also drop off our weight. So I'm just gonna put that like right here for now, I suppose. And switch over to it. There we go. All right. Now, let's grab the baler. Okay, so again, this price is 52797. Okay, so now if we bring it down to the shop, do we get more money? So 52797 is where we're currently at. Okay, we're going to drop it there and go over to the shop and see if we get a little bit more for it or not. 52,793. It's, what? It's less money. <laughs> Are we supposed to take it over to the, to the maintenance place? 
What the heck, man? It probably does need a little bit of repairing now that I think about it, but it can't be that damaged because we haven't used it that much. It's practically new. Hundred and fifty seven to repair. It says the value is fifty eight zero seventy one. Alright, well let's just repair it. So now it says the value is fifty eight two forty five. But if we Okay, so it's fifty two nine fifty right there. Do we have maybe we're supposed to drop it off like right in front of the thing? I don't know. Okay, so let's disconnect. Fifty-two nine forty-nine. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, I th I think it's probably losing a dollar here and there because of minute wear and tear. Would would be my guess, but I don't see any change in price. So. Not sure what else. Whoa. Uh, I guess we're inside our baler. That's a little scary. There we go. <laughs> okay, if you ever wanted to know what the inside of a, a round baler looks like, well, now you know. Um, I mean, is there another spot we're supposed to drop it? Let's, let's just look for a second. No, I don't see anything back here. I don't know why we would bring it all the way back here to sell it. It doesn't really make any sense to me. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, well, I guess we'll just sell it as is. All right, so 52.949, sell. Okay, let's go back and get the Pottinger and bring it back here and sell it. And we also want to sell the, the little windrower too. Okay, so if we sell it from here, we get 34,202. If we run up to the shop, we get 34,202. It makes no difference, yeah. Um, this thing is only 3% damage. I'm not even going to bother um, repairing it. I don't think it's going to matter. Okay, cool. So we sold that. That gets us up to $230,636. Make you holla. Let's go grab the windrower next. <coughs> okay, we'll sell this. Uh, let's look at... Do, 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 do. Let's look at sales. What do we got for sale? Ooh, there's a combine for sale. That's tempting. I mean, we don't have anything right now that we need a combine for. And I was planning on just leasing one when we did need one. Oh. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm going to think about that. I'm going to think about that. If we were to lease this particular combine, um, so it's normally 130 bucks. How much would it cost us? It costs us $6,000, well, $6,600 to lease it. Hmm. Look at that little thing, man. Rosselmosh. Cute. Yeah, um, well, shoot, we could probably lease this one if we're not doing like a ginormous field. It looks like it can do all of these. It probably just has a really small header that goes with it. Okay, yeah, um, 
I don't think we should do the combine right now. Uh, it's tempting, though. I have to say it is tempting. All right, now, I want to go to Baylor's, uh, and I want to get the this Pottinger here because it does 180 centimeter hay and 150 centimeter silage. Uh, what about this one? That one only does hay. It doesn't have a wrapper for silage, yeah. I mean, I know we could buy a separate wrapper thingy, but... You know what? That reminds me... Or, yeah, it reminds me to look at something. It, can this thing wrap? No, it can only go up to 150 centimeters. So I think for round bales, it looks like... Ooh. This guy could wrap 180 centimeter silage bales. So I think that's a silage bale there. That can do round and square bales? Look at that fancy thing. A bale wrapper packs grass. Inline wrappers are used to wrap multiple bales together to one tube. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Okay, well, that's not what we want right now. Okay, so yeah, what I'm thinking is... We go with... Uh, Baylor. And I want to get the large, this Pottinger here, it'll do 180 hay and 150 silage centimeters and wrap. And if we're just doing hay, it won't wrap, but we can still bale. So that's what I want. So we're going to buy this. Too bad this one wasn't for sale uh, in the sales. Okay, so we got that. And then for a wind rower... I still want that big bale loader too, but so we had this kind of, uh, no, we had this windrower and only had 4.7 meters. I'd like something a little bit larger, but not like enormously large. So this Samaz is only 19,000. And it does 8.4 meters versus 4.7. So it's about twice the width as what we had. Hmm. I think I used this on a contract too. And I was thinking, man, this is like, this is nicer than the one I'm using. That's way too much money. This does 9.7, the crone, but it's kind of spendy. What does this do? 14.7? Wow. <laughs> that's got to make that's got to make a ginormous windrow, man. That's 3 meters, that's 2 and a half meters. Those are just really little tiny ones. Um All right, how much money do we have? 136. You know what? I think I'm going to wait. I don't think I'm going to get a windrower at all for now. Let's just, yeah, let's just sit, uh, you have a million miles to go around me, dummy. Okay. Yeah, let's just sit on that for a minute. So, look at our shiny new baler, man. It does the big bales. I love it. Okay, so, here's the other thing that I was thinking, and this is partly why I'm thinking about holding off on the wind drawer. My front mower for all intents and purposes, makes its own windrows. So it's obviously a smaller swath, which means more trips around the field, but then it means we have nice and neat windrows and we don't have to take the extra step to then run a windrow around our field. So I'm kind of thinking that we just use the front mower to mow this thing. Oh, I got to get those trailers out of there too. And not use our rear mower and it'll probably at least in terms of time spent come out in the wash so yeah that's why again like I said I don't think I'm going to even pur purchase a windrower for now because more and more as I do contracts I'm, I'm using I'm using their stuff instead of mine now the one thing I was thinking about though I'm cutting this too sharp aren't I Yep. The one thing I was thinking about was maybe buying that $25,000 spreader that has like the 42 meter 
you know, um, distance and then just start taking fertilizer contracts left and right and using that. Plus, then I will also have it for my own stuff and I won't have to keep leasing it. So that's a thought. The downside to that particular spreader, though, is it doesn't do lime. But if I get, well, yeah, see, the thing is, if I get it, if I have to do my own lime, which I will eventually, uh, I'm going to have to still lease a, a spreader. And I don't like the lime spreaders to use for fertilizer because they, you know, they have a much smaller swath. So I don't know. I'm going to have to think about that some more, I guess. I'm going to have to think about that some more. Anyway, all right, well, what we're going to do is... Uh, we're going to hook up to our front mower and we're going to mow our grass just using the front mower. Take a little bit longer, like I said, but we'll have nice, neat windrows and we don't have to go through the extra step of actually running the windrower. Okay. So now, I, oh, I got to get the trailers out. Yeah, let's go get those out of the way first. I might just um, put them on the neighbor's property across the creek there, just temporary temporarily I don't think they'll mind whoops I forgot to switch switch to that and then this oh I guess I wasn't really very well lined up with that was I there we go that doesn't have another hitch on the back of it. You know what, though? This one does. All right, here. Let's try something here. Just for fun. Funsies. Okay. Now, we should be able to back this up and hitch this one up to the other trailer. Look at that! <laughs> We're creating our own train, man! Alright, now I'm trying- I want to think about the best way to cut this. We have a really long stretch here, and it might work best for us to <coughs> to do all that in one long thingy <coughs> excuse me uh, maybe to what I'm thinking is to the corner of the chain link fence well actually here if we're going to do it that way uh, I actually want to start on that end and I want to do this back section first before we do the front section so let's go this way. We can start unfolding our mower here. Okay. So we're just going to kind of stick this right at the edge of the brush. I don't want to get it too far into the brush because then it'll we'll have a hard time, you know, getting the baler in. Are you down? Oh. There we go. All right, let's cut some grass. Okay, now um, I'm going to back up. Do a line going down this way. Maybe kind of get over here a little more.
Okay, yeah, I think that's what I want to do. So now, uh, hit the right pedal there. Let's get this uh, little section done off over here. Um, actually, yeah, yeah, let's do this little section first. It's just, you know, we have an irregular field, so it's like, okay, what's the best way to do this? I think I'm going to try and X what we have left here. So let's get over here. Um, I might do a little bit of a headland too. I don't want to get too far over by that fence or, or I'll cut grass and then I won't be able to pick it up. So let's just go along here. Okay. And I think for over here, we can probably go about this far, maybe. We could probably get about two mowers widths with my mower here. Whoops. Nice. Okay, let's flip this around and go back this way. Okay, now we're going to aim for that corner over there. Yeah, the X isn't going to really help us a whole lot on... Um, this sharp corner. So why don't we do a line down here. And I'm gonna stay... Uh, yeah, actually I'm gonna follow the field down and then come back this way. I can cut this little bit too. Okay, now, um, I think for this one, I'm just going to go at a 45 degree angle-ish. I don't know, this might not be all that beneficial on this particular field just because of its irregular shape, but okay. Now, let's start, um, start over here.
Okay, that does it for the mowing. Not too bad. Not too bad. I didn't... You know, doing the little diagonal X thing, he didn't really help a whole lot for this field, I guess. So, either that or I did it wrong, which is entirely possible. Alright, let's turn this off. Fold it up. And let's wash it, too, because it is filthy. So yeah, that took a little bit longer to do, but A, we have pretty nice clean windrows, and B, I don't have to go through the whole thing over again in windrow now. I'm just going to wash the tractor while we're at it. It's just going to get dirty again, though. Okay, let's park uh, our mower. Actually, I'm going to put it over here. Now we can try out our shiny new baler. I'm going to make the 150 centimeter bales this time. Okay, so we're going to the help menu. We press L to change to 150. And we want automatic drop on. And I think we're good. I think we're good to go. I think I want to go counterclockwise. So let's get in position over here. We'll probably just do the main field first and then I'll hit the side portions later. Okay, lower the lift, turn her on, and let's bail some sidage. All right, we're coming up on the last little part here. And then uh, we'll see how many bales we, we get. We got quite a few down in the field, so and we have 34% more left over in the baler. So not too bad. Uh, I don't think I have any major areas that I need to go back and get. There's little tiny spots, you know, like this one here, but nothing too bad really. That one that's over by the fence there I can't get because it's not on my property, so. Looking good. Yeah, this baler is uh, it's a lot heavier. <laughs> it's making my poor little tractor work, but we got it done. Uh, if you look at the damage gauge, I this tractor is pretty much broke, so we're gonna have to take it and take it in and get it repaired. And I bet you it's gonna cost over ten grand, but you know we got to do what we got to do. So it sure has been a, a good tractor for us so far. At some point, whoops, at some point we're going to have to, though, um, think about getting a new one because I think the problem with these used tractors is that each time you repair them, you you lose a little bit more and you can't keep, you know, eventually, I guess if you took it all the way down, you wouldn't be able to re repair it all the way back up again or something like that. That didn't make any sense. I knew what I was talking about. You guys probably didn't, but I did. <laughs> okay. Let's drop this off. Now, I need to decide... Whoops. I need to si decide what I'm going to do with these bales. Um, meaning long-term storage or short-term storage. Short-term meaning I'll put them on the trailer, and then when they ferment the next... It takes a day or two. Then we'll just take them and sell them. 
Problem is the price is, you know, is going to be dropping more, though. So. Oh, no, that doesn't need to be cleaned. So let's take a look at that. Um, we do have three days in March, though, so the price may not change too drastically. All right, so let's go here. And we have silage and price fluctuation. Okay, so we are in March. Yeah, it's kind of a crap time to sell, but it's not the worst crap time to sell it. And I, I kind of want, you know, I kind of want to get the, the cash now. Um, I don't think we're going to make a bazillion bucks on this, even if we did hold out for the better price <clears throat> in January. So I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and load our trailer up and then just let them sit on the trailer until it's time to, uh, you know, take them in. And in the meantime, you know, we've got some contracts here that we can work. In fact, there's quite a few. Look at all these fertilizing contracts. I'm probably going to take all of these, actually. And, oh, you know what else we need to do? Um, let's, let's see, what do you got? Yeah, we just want to use... They all say with any type of fertilizer. So why don't we just take, well, you know, I, I have been doing a, a contract and then using the equipment to do other contracts, which the game lets me do it, but that's not very realistic. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to do that in real life, you know? Uh, but I have been thinking strongly about buying one of these spreaders. I, I don't know if I told you that earlier or not. Because, um, you know, we're going to always need one for our own fields anyways. And if I buy it, then I don't have to, you know, rent their stuff. And in the case of like this this big one, you know, we're saving 1500 bucks, uh, you know, by using our own. So I think I'm going to do that. I haven't fully decided uh, if I if I mentioned that already earlier in this episode, I apologize. I just can't remember if I did or not. Oh, we did miss a little spot there, but that's all right. Um, there's a spot by the bag. Okay, so let's load up our front loader here and get our new little claw thingy that I bought and haven't actually used yet. And I think that's going to make loading a little bit simpler. And we're just going to load up our flatbed and let it sit on there to ferment. And then we'll... Uh, when the time comes, uh, we'll sell it. Hopefully, it'll firm it tomorrow. If not, then by March 3rd. I don't want to go into April because then the price is going to drop, you know, even more. Uh, let's get our rear weight on, too. Uh, I should take this down and repair it, though, first. It's in pretty bad shape. Yeah, let's do that first. Look at that clean field though, man. It's looking good. Yeah, I'm a I'm a little bit nervous about, <laughs> about how much this is gonna cost to to repair this tractor. I'll bet you it's gonna be at least ten grand. Okay, tractor. Oh, Okay, 8,313. That's still expensive, but not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Okay, so now it says the condition is all the way back up. But notice if we get in the tractor, if you look at the yellow bar, it's not all the way back up. And I don't think we can... I think that bar goes down further and further each time until eventually you just wouldn't be able to repair it at all. Because see, it doesn't give me another option to repair it. So, you know, that's the, the downside of the used vehicles, but, I mean, we'll get every last, squeeze every last bit of, you know, life or whatever you want to call it out of this thing that we can before. And I think, I don't know, it, when it goes completely down, I think it still runs. It just, you know, it runs poorly, but if it's still functional and gets the job done, you know, we'll probably just keep using it for... As long as we can, or maybe it, maybe not. Maybe it completely breaks. I don't know. We'll, well, I guess we'll just find out, or you guys can tell me in the comments. 
Okay, so let's go get our trailers. Now, the other thing I've been thinking about is, ex you know, expanding this field. Uh, we're get My plan is to plant some oats. And if we do that, I'll probably leave this area untouched because we still need an area for loading and staging and parking the trailers. And because this doohickey well, whatever thing is in the way anyway, it seems to me like this would make sense to keep most of this open. At least maybe, you know, from the well on back. And then plow everything here, you know, pretty much all the way to the bushes and exp expand the field that way. Field that way. That's kind of what I've been thinking. I haven't made any final decisions about that yet, though. Okay. So with that in mind, um, I am going to start parking the trailers over this way. It's such a pain in the butt to get back in there too, you know, for even with the grass that I don't know if I'm going to bother with it anymore. I spend ha darn near half the time on this job just trying to get the grass out of the really tight areas and it's, you know, what are we getting from that? Probably not even a full bale, so it's just questionable as to whether or not it's actually worth it or not, I think. Okay, let's get the flat bed on a flat-ish area. Yeah, that's good there. And then we want to make sure the flatbed is selected so we can unhitch it and then we'll bring this guy back around and just park it in the corner over here yeah I mean even the area up there by the house you know in between the fences and stuff I don't know if I'm gonna keep cutting that it's just such a hassle to get in and out of there and again I just don't think it's you know, we're not making like tons of money from doing that, so just question whether or not it's actually worth it. Okay. So, let's see. That is up. That's, no, that's up. That's down. Claw twist opens. Okay. Easy enough. Now, what I would like to maybe try and do is double stack. Well, no, I don't think we have that many bales. I guess we could put them on. What I was thinking is... See if we can stack like two vertically at a time, which I'm sure we can. I'm just not sure if we need to. Okay, let's go flip this guy up. up a little bit over this way a tad okay and then what we do is grab both of them I want to make sure it's in the center so it's I mean I could grab the bottom one too but if I grab them both then, you know, they're both going to be secure. Like so. Oh, I don't... <laughs> I don't have a very good hold on that bottom one, actually. It looks like it's going to gonna hold. Okay. Let's 
line it up this way. Trailer's kind of flipping around. Okay, well, oh, no, 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 go this way. I could mess with it and get it a little neater, but you know what? That's good enough. I can't spend all day doing this. And again, I, I don't even know if this is worth the, the hassle, to be honest with you. Should probably just pick them up and throw them on there and be done with it. Oops. Let's get it down that way a little more. It's not precisely the way we're supposed to hook it, but... Okay, let's leave that there. Yeah, honestly, it would have been easier just to put them on this way. Because then I don't have to try and flip them around. They're just already going the right direction. Tell you what, though. Let's just... Um, I want to try and see if I can flip it over. Oh, just about. Okay. It's better, it's going to be better to come at it from this side because then I can just tip it. Let's get lined up here. Not close enough. There we go. Down a little lower this time. And in a little more too. See, that looked like it kind of squeezed them together a little more. So they're straighter. Let me zoom out a little bit. Yeah, that's better. I'm always fighting the doggone camera angle. Uh, easy. That wish that trailer wouldn't move. See how it's moving on its own? I'm not even touching it. It's a real nuisance. Okay. All right, we're going to leave the, the first four like that. The rest I'm just going to put on sideways. It's just going to be, it, this is too much screwing around. we got other things to do. We can't spend all day doing this. I do like this claw, though. It's definitely better than the fork and the other things we've used. All 
Oh, you know what else we should do is hop out and scrap this so we don't mess it up. There we go. Okay, it ain't going nowhere now. There we go. All right, everything's strapped down. So we're just going to keep this parked uh, back here, I guess, until they ferment. And uh, like I said earlier, I'm, I'm not planning on plowing this area back here. We'll, this will be our loading and staging area. So we don't have a ton of room on this on this land. Okay, we are going to go buy ourselves that Amazon fertilizer spreader. And that way we have it for ourselves. And then we're going to do every fertilization contract that's available. And make ourselves a little bit of money. And then tomorrow on March the 2nd, what time is it? It's 10.55 possibly tomorrow afternoon the silage or, or the hay will have turned to silage and then if it does we'll sell it at that point because so I'm not going to hang on to it till January I think we're just going to sell it and make you know turn it into cash right now and yeah that's the plan okay so uh, let's go in here and go in here and we're buying you Here we go. We have our very own fertilizer spreader. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take all of these fertilization contracts and we're not going to use their stuff because we have our own. I'm just going to take every single one of them because even on a big field, we're still going to be able to knock this out pretty quickly with that, you know, with the width of that spreader. So yeah. We're looking at 10, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. We're looking about 25 to 27,000 bucks right there. Well, that, well, yeah, but that doesn't count the cost for the fertilizer. So there is that. Oh, you know what? I have to put this on the front. Because uh, I need the, the three point hitch for the back. I meant to put it on the front, anyways. There we go. Okay. Now, we have some fertilizer back at the farm, but I think we'll just keep that there because we're going to need it too. So let's go ahead and go into here, and I don't know how many of these I'm going to need. Let's start with, say, four. I mean, I don't want to overdo it either, right? Um... So let's buy four of these. It's going to cost us $5,460. Make you holla. And let's fill this sucker up. Oh. Why does that say 7000 It just says... I don't... What? Wait a minute. Uh, Go here. We are in March. Uh, oh, yeah, that, yeah, that's right, I think. Why did I think it was 5,000? I don't know. I don't know, man. Okay. Load up. Just fill this thing all the way to the rim. So it takes three and just a little bit more to fill this spreader all the way up. Okay, let's take a look at our contracts. 
Where is the biggest field? Let's just get that one knocked out first. So that's field 57. And 57 is right here. That's the same field we plowed that took hours, but it ain't going to take us hours to, to spread this. Okay, let's do this. All right, I think we want to start right about <clears throat> here-ish. Uh, maybe even a little further over. I think this is probably good. All right, so it is... I want to see how fast I can get this done. So I'm going to time myself just for fun. Okay, here we go. Okay, so that took about six and a half minutes. Uh, I did miss a couple of strips, which we'll go back and get just to do a good job. But um, yeah, six and a half minutes versus, oh gosh, three hours maybe of real time to plow this thing. Because when I took the contract to plow it, they gave me too small of a plow. It took forever. So yeah, fertilizer contracts, they pay more than plowing and you can get them done in a fraction of the time. So... Don't know if I'll be doing any more plowing contracts unless I get a ginormous plow. Thing is, is there aren't any fertilizer contracts to do, uh, you know, in the fall. Because nobody's fertilizing in the fall, so plowing is mostly what there is. But, you know, hopefully by next autumn we'll have enough of our own stuff going on that we won't have to rely a whole lot on contracts anyways. All right, and then it's just a couple of spots over here. We, I mean, it probably doesn't even matter, but yeah, we'll fix them anyway. Okay, that's it. And that was the biggest field. So, um, let's see. This is completed, right? It, I didn't see the message. Yeah, it's completed. So, we can turn this in right now because we're using our own equipment. So, least cost reimbursement, missing crops. Yeah, okay. Missing crops. <laughs> okay, that was easy money. Uh, let's do the next biggest one here. Field 25. Uh, that's here. Yeah, that's just a really long kind of skinny-ish field. I had to plow that one too. Uh, but anyways, all right, guys. Well, I'm going to probably let you go here. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I've actually spent probably two or three hours recording, but I'm going to have to edit a lot of that out. <clears throat> so I think we're probably done with this episode if, if we're not. Oh, you know what? We needed to call... Larry's landscaping service to fix this. That was my boo-boo. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna keep doing these fertilizer contracts. I mean, they're pretty straightforward. Uh, let's just do that. Boop. And then we will do plants. Eh, close enough. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to do all these fertilizer contracts. Once I get them all knocked out, if nothing else pops up, I'm not doing those weeding contracts. Um, I mean, I don't think I will. Let's see. Look at Let's look at them again. Yeah, it... Field 28. How big is field 28? Or where is it? This one. Yeah, I don't think so. I probably won't. I might. We'll see. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to do all the fertilizing contracts, and then when that's done, 
I'm either gonna sleep till the next day and do more contracts or I might actually bring you guys back in the next episode and we'll get started on our farm uh, or on our field. Uh, so we're gonna be plowing and planting oats. So I'll figure it out, out but and you guys will know when uh, uh, when I'm back. So I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment to share out the video and we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.